and we're going to look at a number of different muscles. We're going to start with the rotator cuff and we're going to look at the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. Now, these muscles are obviously covered by the trapezius, so we have to get through the trapezius to be able to isolate those, those muscles. So we need to make sure that we're safe. Now, although we have a flat scapula here, we know that we have the lung pleura beneath, and in some instances, the scapula itself may not be completely ossified. So we can't rely on the firmness of bone underneath us. So we're going to choose a technique which guarantees that we're not going to go deep vertically. So we're going to angle the, the uh, needle and then we're going to isolate the muscle away from the bone. So let's start off with our supraspinatus. Now we know the supraspinatus is a lateral rotator and we know that it's beneath the upper trapezius. So I've got a bulky muscle here and I'm not sure which one I'm on. So if I press into here, if you could now laterally rotate, so he's laterally rotating against my resistance and I'm feeling something bulging under my fingers, if you just relax that. And now if you could just shrug your shoulder against my resistance, so I can see the upper trapezius coming here and that feels different to the resisted lateral rotation here. So that confirms that I'm on to my supraspinatus. But of course, when that needle goes in, it's not just going into the supraspinatus, it has to go through the middle trapezius in order to get into the supraspinatus. All right, so as I put this muscle in then, I'm going to angle it, and I want to angle it towards bone so that I know that I'm safe. And I'm gonna use a specific technique called a step block to make sure I'm in the right area. So I found the sharp edge, which is the spine of the scapula. If I go in deep here, the, the additional edge that I feel would be the superior border. So I'm gonna have one finger on the spine of the scapula. The other finger is going to compress into the muscle, and then I'm going to angle my needle this way going towards bone. So it's angled at about 20 degrees to the skin surface and it's the tip of the needle is heading towards bone and I'm ensuring that I'm in the right position by keeping my finger onto that bone. So one finger on the spine of the scapula, one finger above it where the supraspinatus is, uh, is resting. I'm compressing down and now I'm angling the needle towards the scapular spine. <coughs> so I'm coming through the trapezius into the supraspinatus, but I'm making sure that I'm not going down towards the couch, which will be a vertical insertion. I've got my oblique insertion angling from the skin. Okay, I keep that compression on as I withdraw the needle just before that needle tips breaks free of the skin surface. I compress the skin with a tube just to stop it gathering around the needle. And then again, I inspect the area. If there's a spot of blood, I'm going to compress that. If not, we can leave it as it is. And then afterwards, I would get him to do some stretches. It's a lateral rotator, so he's going to stretch into medial rotation to lengthen that muscle. As we come to our upper trapezius, we're more or less in the same area, but obviously now we're higher up. It's a thicker muscle, so we need to get deeper into it. And in order to do that, I'm going to lift the muscle up. Now here, I'm just lifting a skin fold. And I know that the muscle itself, if you just elevate your scapula, is quite thick. So what I can do is just lift the arm a little, just to place that muscle into a more relaxed position. And then I've got a nice fold of muscle that I can needle into. 
So, I'm going to use some gel again onto the area. And I've chosen a needle which is appropriate to the body area. So, I'm using a 30mm needle. He's an athlete. You may find that if you're using a needle on an elderly subject, you might choose a smaller needle. You may find if you have a particularly large subject, you need a, a longer needle. And you need to judge the thickness because we're manipulating the needle. So I'm using a 0.22, which is quite a thin needle. If you find the needle is bending too much, you might choose a 0.25. So I'm drawing the muscle fold up and my fingers are beneath that muscle fold. So I've now got something that I can aim for. So I can use that feeling, that tactile cue, that um, I place the needle in through the skin and then I move it towards my underlying finger. So what I'm doing is gently exploring that muscle just to get an idea of the tone of the muscle itself. Once I've got that I can change the stimulus to a twirling or rotation stimulus where the fascial fibers are gathering around the needle itself and I would expect to increase the resistance around the needle so I can feel some needle grasp and I would expect the patient to feel the reproduction of their familiar symptoms. So I want a, a diffuse dull ache. I may fire the trigger, trigger point off so I get a, a small twitch, but I want a, some form of feeling that I'm, in, I'm achieving uh, an aim into that area. So withdraw the needle release once the needle tip approaches the surface and then take the needle out. Inspect the area before the uh, subject moves. And normally we can expect the subject to react to the needling so you're just going to say to him well okay you know sit up or stand up slowly uh, he may feel a little bit lightheaded so just just be cautious of that. So that's our supraspinatus and our trapezius. When we come to our infraspinatus, the technique is exactly the same, whereas with our supraspinatus, we angle this way to the spine of the scapula. For our infraspinatus, we would angle this way to the spine of the scapula. When we come to our rhomboids, the rhomboid is a, a, a quite a small muscle, but an important muscle for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's one of the downward rotators of the, the scapula, so if it becomes shortened or overactive, it can uh, be important in impingement uh, syndromes of the shoulder itself. But also we know that it's stretching from the medial border of the scapula towards the spine, and in so doing, it's passing over the rib angle a little bit like a guitar string and sometimes what can happen as a cause of uh, snapping scapula is that the rhomboid can flick over the rib angle and cause pain. So we're going to needle into that area but by, we're going to try to isolate the muscle which is covered by the thick trapezius. And one of the things that we can use uh, is something known as the arm lock position, where if I place him in this position, you can see the medial border of the scapula has now become prominent. This is our hollow triangle of auscultation. Our rhomboid muscles lie here. So I'm going to needle through the trapezius, aiming towards the medial border of the scapula. Now, if I strike the medial border, that's not necessarily a bad thing because it gives me another technique, what's known as a, a periosteal technique, um, but that would give a slightly different feeling than striking a trigger point itself. So, triangle of auscultation, 
medial border of the scapula and coming over the area here. So I know that I've got my thickened trapezius with my rhomboid underneath. I'm placing one finger on the scapula. I'm compressing the trapezius and then I'm angling that needle in towards the medial border of the scapula. So I've raised the medial border away from the rib cage. Okay. As I withdraw that, I just move my fingers away from that needle because it can flick. And then support his arm as we take it back down and then we can give him um, just general range of motion for the scapula. So just a simple abduction movement will elevate and depress the scapula and rotate it.